Hello, my friends. Welcome to Quartet. So nice to have you with us. I'm John Peterson from the Arlington Institute, and we're coming to you on a sunny but chilly uh, spring day from here in Berkeley Springs, West Virginia, in the Appalachian Mountains, just down the road from Washington and Baltimore. And I'm joined, as I am all the time, uh, by uh, my friends and colleagues here. Uh, Penny Kelly. Hello, Penny. How are you? Hi, John. Hi, everybody. It's good to be here. And Kingsley, how are you, my friend? I'm good. Thank you, John. I'm staying sane. And greetings to everybody. <laughs> and Greg Braden. Hello, Greg. Hey, it's good to see everyone. I, I don't know if I can make the same claim that uh, Kingsley just made about sanity, but it's <laughs> it's good to be with everyone. And I'm looking forward to our, our conversation today. For the first time in my life, things don't make sense there is no uh underlying cohesion there's no uh, kind of basic assumptions that, that that are the kind of the architecture around which uh we all kind of make understand and make sense out of what's happening and where this is all going and all of a sudden uh in the last uh, literally a couple of weeks there have started to be pieces that have started to come together, in my mind at least, that suggest that uh, uh, all of this organization, it, it, the obvious kind of organization and sophistication and, and strategic planning that is clearly a part and un the underpinnings of what is going on, uh, it, that, that have been in in train for a long time clearly for a long time this is like i say this is not something that did showed up two weeks ago and i think uh, that i was keyed uh, around this by an article that uh that james corbett uh, did a video that he did uh on the corbett report uh and you can find it there under fifth <laughs> gen and they're talking about fifth generation warfare uh and uh we it, and he was making the case that uh, uh, there there has over time been this kind of these evolutionary jumps in the way that people uh, fight and kill each other. <laughs> I guess what this war is is about is a war for the human mind, and the uh, objective of trying to suppress and control another group of people. Uh, remains the same, but the methodology is one that essentially says that if we can get to your mind, if we can change the way you think, if you can, if you can change your idea of reality, then you will uh, kind of naturally kind of go along with uh, what the objective is. Uh, what Corbett is saying is that uh, there. They're trying to get you to uh, believe that reality is something other than it is. This is all exacerbated in the, by this uh, issue of artificial intelligence, which has uh, raised its head in the last five months. Uh, you know, six months ago, nobody knew anything about artificial intelligence, and then chat GPT showed up. And suddenly it is moving like crazy all over the place. This is what AI is. And what this is doing is an integral part of this larger spectrum of this kind of vector that's going forward, which is uh, this fifth generation uh, warfare. And, and it's one thing to uh, try to dominate social media and generate memes and have thousands of people in the army and the navy and everybody that are trying to manipulate everything on the internet and make it look like something you know it's something other than it is and certainly then you got the russians and the ukrainian the ukrainians and everybody's in this game to try to do that and underneath is rising up this extraordinary kind of capability that you will not be able to tell what is real and what isn't and where anything comes. It's already to that point. There's a battle 
And it's beyond a battle for our thoughts. It's beyond a battle for our beliefs. It's beyond a battle for our bodies. All those are happening. It's a battle for what is called our divinity, which is our ability to transcend the perceived limitations of human. It, it is a battle for our ultimate potential, or the extraordinary potential that lives within us. And that battle has taken on many, many forms over the years. What's happening right now is the technology is allowing a new implementation of that ancient battle. The ideas for this battle, for our divinity, were really codified in a way that had not been done before by, uh, by a philosopher. His name was uh, Saul Alinsky. And in his book, Rules for Radicals, he codified what we're seeing happening in our society today uh, into four simple steps. He said, when you want to break the social bonds that hold people together, whether it's you and your own thinking, or you and your family, or you and your community, or you and your society, or you and your nation, or the planet. He said, what you do is you pick a target, any target. So you have to identify clearly what it is, and then you freeze that target to the exclusion of everything else. Everything is zeroed into that target, and then you personalize it, and then you polarize it. Uh, we're seeing it happen with carbon, and carbon dioxide and oil, we're seeing it happening, the, the battle between men and women, blacks against whites, Christians against Muslims after 9-11. These are the principles uh, that are being used. Now the technology and the AI that you are talking about is allowing uh, this protocol to be implemented in ways far beyond what it has in the past. And most people don't even know that it's happening. We appear to be on, uh, on a countdown. Uh, there is an urgency to break our social bonds, to make us vulnerable so that a new social order can be implemented within our near future, around that 2030, 2035 timeframe. And there are geophysical reasons that may be driving this. There are cosmological events that may be driving this. But the point is, Jonathan, you nailed this. There is an intensification of this so whether we call it fifth generation warfare or not, it is a battle for the, our, our perceptions and the way we think. But ultimately, that's the vehicle. The battle is for our divinity, our power to disempower us. Now, you've asked uh, the question, what do we do about that? And very simply, we stop relying on algorithms to feed us information. In other words, rather than allowing us to be served the information, we have the ability and there are tools and techniques we can talk about uh, that allow us to seek out information without being under the thumb of those algorithms. It takes work. A lot of people don't have the time is what they say, but there is a remedy for this. And I think it begins with us just being aware uh, of what it is that's happening and our, our complicit role in this, even though we may not be consciously aware of it, we are all complicit. You know, I have a whole bunch of things I want to say, but I'm going to talk about this to some extent next week when I come to the transition talk. So I don't want to say too much now, but I think one of the biggest problems that I see is that we as a population, as a global population, are not really stepping back far enough to see the big picture. There's still this idea that's missing, and that's that we are a planetary civilization. And we're still thinking of one another as little isolated groups fighting or worrying about nuclear engagement or not enough food or the banking system or the medical drama that's been going on. The fact of the matter is that this kind of fifth generation warfare is what you do when you want to take over an entire planet. When you want to take over a planet, you want to A, get rid of what they consider to be all the dummies. You know, no offense to anybody out there, but all those people who don't think for themselves, who are um, who just swallow the medicine, okay? 
so that's number one. Number two is you do not want to have to rebuild. So therefore, why would you go in with bombs? So instead, you go in, and just like Alex Jones says, it's a war for your mind. Because if they can get people to swallow all the narrative and to begin to act in lockstep with one another, they then have control over the entire planet, and nobody thinks outside the box. When you look at it from a bigger point of view, it becomes a fork in the road for an entire group of people. That group has to decide, are we going with you know, the, the narrative or are we building our own world? A dimension is a whole range of frequencies. Within that range, you can build a world using some of those frequencies. So we have a world that we have built, and and it happens to be in this place on planet Earth in this time, and there are beings from elsewhere who would really like to take over, and there are many reasons for that, which I won't go into now, but that decision as to which way you're going to go is where we are at, the great fork in the road. I want to frame it a bit in a historical context, because this part of this dumbing down process has been part of a the, the social cultural environment for for a long time in the west especially um i mean it was no no coincidence that you know edward bernays shifted the the war information office into the public relations so really anything coming through public relations is an information warfare just to take that further in the 1950s people may be familiar with operation mockingbird in the US, whereby a lot of uh, intelligence agencies and their assets were placed in all the media channels and in the universities. There's been studies of how the social sciences were overrun with CIA assets. What I think is happening now is that also, to our advantage, this cognitive warfare is becoming more obvious. And in fact, even other other sides are talking about it openly, which was before. I mean, the term psyops, e even recently, like Russia and Ukraine and the US are saying, oh, the other side are doing a psyops. Like even five years ago, people weren't accusing the other side of doing a psyops. Now it's becoming a, you know, a kind of otherwise it'd be, I think next year will be a dictionary word of the year, psyops. Um, <laughs> And not, strangely enough, coincidentally enough, just this morning, I was reading through a, a magazine article and there was an interview with Putin's, um, one of Putin's closest aides, where his name is um, Nikolai, Nikolai Pashtriev, Patrushev. And he has been with um, Putin since the 70s and he's now the uh, Secretary of the Security Council of Russia. And this is an interview he gave a couple of months ago, January 23, 2023. This is one part. He said, the West has mastered the zombification of people with the help of mass propaganda, and now it seeks to use cognitive weapons, influencing each person on an ad hoc basis, using information technology and neuropsychological methods. And that's an open interview. People are unwittingly becoming part of the participation because what the AI needs at this stage, the AI feeds on data and it needs more and more data. And I think it was Google who said that they had no more data to feed their AI, so they let it roam social media and feed off people's data. So we are now feeding the AI with our data. So part of this rollout now with digital ID, digital identity, everything digital, is at one stage part of the control agenda, of course, to, to you know, centralize the human mobility and the human freedom. The other side is everything we do, everything we say, everything we buy, everything we put out feeds the same AI, which is now trying to destabilize our reality. So I think we've got to the point where cognitive perception reality is being destabilized and we are perhaps feeding it through data.
we'll come and do this again, of course, in two weeks. For those of you who are viewers, uh, I want to remind you that this is one of the programs that we have here at the Arlington Institute. And uh, we have transition talks, which uh, Penny mentioned. She's going to be our speaker every month. We have a, a marvelous uh, speaker who uh, comes both here in Berkeley Springs, but also by live stream. You can find out all about it on uh, arlingtoninstitute.org. Greg will uh, be with us in uh, September, is it? Uh, or August? I can't remember. I think it's August. 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 It's August. August, yeah. <laughs> And uh, we've got a, a wonderful lineup that goes off into, you know, almost to the end of the year so far. And you can find out that uh, again at uh, arlingtoninstitute.org. And so uh, come back and be with us and uh, we'll we'll be back in two weeks. And we're going to talk about uh, this AI and what the implications of artificial intelligence is in this growing kind of proliferation across so many uh, different kind of areas. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.